LinkedIn can be a great place for authors to promote their books in many, many ways, some of which you haven't thought of before. And today you're going to learn some unique ways for authors to promote their books. And this is for you business professionals who've written books as well. Uh, a lot of great op a lot of great information here. Hi, I'm Dan Janelle, the author of Write Your Book in a Flash. I've written more than a dozen other books, and I am a ghostwriter, book coach, and developmental editor for business professionals and healthcare professionals who want to build their brands with a book. Our guest today is Donna Serdula. She is the author of two editions of LinkedIn Profile Optimization for Dummies. She's the founder and president of Vision Board, a professional branding company that helps individuals and companies tell their unique stories on LinkedIn and beyond. She's been featured in Forbes, Business Insiders, Times Money section, and many, many other places. This is episode two in our series with Donna. Check out our first episode where she talks about best practices for LinkedIn uh, for authors. This one will focus on more advanced strategies for authors and for business professionals who've written books. So let's dive right in. Donna, what are some best practices for authors? How can they get more publicity? And what's what's too much? What's crossing the line? What What's crossing the line in terms of uh, marketing your book on LinkedIn? Right? Is that the question? Right. Yeah, well said. Yes. So, you know, I I think it's one of those things where you just do it. <laughs> do it. Don't worry too much. I think most people are a little sensitive and 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 they want to pull back a bit. And so I would say don't pull back so much. You know, go ahead, post on LinkedIn. And and I said this before, but use LinkedIn as as a place to add value. You know, it's not so much about selling and selling and selling the book. You know, I really think about it as this is a place to add value. This is a place to educate. This is a place to motivate and inspire and and help people. You know, and if you do that with your expertise in mind, because that's how you're going to help people, that's how you're going to inspire people. And and you talk about it and you talk about it with frequency and consistency. And and you mention, hey, I've I've got a book, you know, here, here it is, you know, and, and mention maybe not every single day, but you know, you know, cling to your topic, talk about it, talk about it to the point where you even may feel a little tired of it. But surprisingly, you have to remember, you know all the times that you're posting, but most people aren't getting every single post, you know? And so for them, they're getting it you know, when, when they need it, they, they're getting it when they tune in and, and it may feel a little heavy to you, but to most people, they're not going to feel that way. They're going to be grateful that you're there and you're helping them and you're guiding them and you're, you're inspiring them. I'm glad you pointed that out because we think we're on there every day, but I saw some statistics that said that the average LinkedIn user goes on twice a month. Yeah. And maybe different markets are different numbers, but chances are most people are not going to see your post. And so if you post the same thing or similar things or post a lot, you're really reaching a very small segment of your market yeah. each time. So you're really not overburdening them, which is uh, a fear that I think a lot of people have, like, oh, I'm running too much. Uh, when you were promoting your book, how did you do it? Well, I've heard things of like, do a marketing thing one time, do two. Uh, messages that are nice three times and a personal thing one time. I don't know if that holds or what those numbers are, but do you have any rules of thumb for what to post or how to post? You know, I, I wish I could tell you that I have a, a secret sauce in terms of the mm -hmm. book marketing. And and when I when my book came out, it was just something that I, I talked about, I talked about stories around the book, stories about writing the book. I, I talked about uh, conversations that I had with my editor along the way. Hmm. It, oh. it was one of those things where I felt that, you know, my audience was along for the ride with me. So they came through the the writing process with me and then they went through the publishing, you know, part where, where, you know, we, we, you know, it was approved and went hit the presses and all of that good part, good, you know, good parts of it. And, and, you know, and then, you know, I talked about it and, and if I had a good review, I'd post it and I, you know, I talked about how happy I was and I got a few bad reviews, <laughs> but I also said, Hey, 
it hurts, you know, it's, it's not easy when these things happen. Um, but I think just being, just treating it in a very natural and authentic way and an open way, I think, I think that's what got people really excited and they felt that they were a part of it. And, um, I, I've got to tell you, and one of my happiest things is when, when I'm talking to a person like yourself and they pull, they pull up the book, you know, and they've got it, you know, and it's dog eared and it's, it's ratty because they've really used it. And it's just one of the the best feelings in the world. That's great. I love the idea that, you know, you're promoting the book and take people along on the journey long before the book is even written. Yeah. So for people to think like, oh, I've written the book now I need to start marketing. No, I say take them along the author's journey from the very beginning. And I love how you do the, the fears and the doubts that makes you so much more relatable and getting a bad review, um, you know, somehow makes you like one of us. <laughs> It's not like, oh, she's wonderful. I can't possibly do that because she's wonderful. But uh, when when you show your vulnerability, you really show that uh, other people can do it too. And yeah. it shows that you're real. So I, I love that. What uh, Did you find that people were, uh, what kind of comments did people make when uh, when you post your review? Do they enhance the conversation? Do they, what was it? How did you, what, after someone's, let me rephrase this. After someone posts a response to your message, any kind of message, yeah. what do you do to encourage that person to respond again? How do you further the conversation? Yeah, well, you know, your 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 question is really a great one because it gets at something that's very, very important. And we talked about a post on LinkedIn does well when there's engagement. And so when you have comments, you always want to respond to those comments, at least within the first 24 hours. Um, and if you can do it longer, go right ahead. But it's almost like you're having a networking party, right? And, and you're asking people to, to join in and talk to you, and then you ignore them. It's horrible. So you mm. really do need to respond to these comments. And, and the way I look at it is, is, you know, respond, you know, have a natural conversation. If, if something they said reminds you of something you know, mention it, you know, I find that with LinkedIn, I often, I often try to go humorous because it's such a professional platform that I find that if you say something silly, it's almost a little, little strange that people love it. So, you know, you know, sh smile and, and just res be friendly and, you know, be silly a little bit. It's okay. And, and, but when you do that, when you, when you treat people in that manner where it's like, let's, let's just have a conversation. They're more apt to, to respond again. Um, and then you can always use the power of the at, the at tag, right? So, you know, if you, if you post and something reminds you of a person from, a, you know, a comment who maybe they said something or, and it, it prompted you to follow up with a post later, you know, at tag, go ahead, pull them into the conversation through the comments. It's, it's a, it's a way of keeping them, keeping them engaged. So if you respond to someone's comment, do you need to at tag them again? Are they, or are they, or are they automatically notified that you responded? I at tag, I at tag, I will, I will, I will tag them in my comment, even if I'm replying within that thread only because I just feel that it almost, um, it just seals the deal, I guess, you know, it just makes sure that they do in fact see it. Okay. Let's go back to the headlines uh, in your bio. What are some best practices for the headlines and why don't we look at yours or if you can show yours to see what the expert does to uh, promote herself as well as her business, as well as her book. Can we do that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we're at Donna's LinkedIn profile. And we'll read, why don't you read it out loud and tell us what you did, because there are lots of cool things here. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. So, so there's a few things that I did. Um, first and foremost, I'm using my tagline in my background graphic. And I also have a picture of my book. I used Canva to create this. And, um, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's just one way of a person taking a look and immediately knowing who I am and what I do. I also made sure to use Canva on my 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 
profile picture. I could have very easily just uploaded the profile picture that the photographer gave me, but I also brought that into Canva. I, I removed the background. I put something colorful behind me. For a very long time, it was just blue, but just recently within this last, just on New Year's Eve, in fact, I did it, is that I, I decided to go with more of a sunburst because I don't see a lot of people doing it, but it, it's Donna, a great I, way of- I, I... Mm -hmm. I apologize. My computer froze again. Let's pick it. So the, let's start again with your picture. You're talking about okay. your picture. Yes. And then when you look at my profile picture, that too, I brought into Canva. Um, I could have very easily taken my the, the, the photo that the professional photographer had given me and I could have uploaded it. But in some ways, I find that, you know, in LinkedIn, you want to catch a person's eye. And the best way of doing that is through bright colors. And so I took it to Canva, removed the background. I, I used a sunburst behind me. And, and I think it, it really catches a person's eye. Um, when we go drop our eyes down a little bit more, you'll notice that there are two icons after my name. Um, the first one is the shield. And that says that, hey, I am who I am. I, I've, I've, uh, I've, um, proven that I'm a real person with my driver's license. So that's a good thing. And then right next to the shield is a speaker. And if you were to click that, you'd hear me introducing myself, but not just introducing myself by saying my name, but really introducing myself and saying who I am and what I do. And this is something that people often will just use their name pronunciation, but I say, go a little further. You got a full 10 seconds. Hmm. Introduce yourself. Now, once we get underneath that, right underneath the name, that is my headline. And here it says branding for you, powerful positioning to elevate and accelerate your career, founder, president, four dummies, author, talk about injecting the book yet again, <laughs> but it is something I'm very proud of. And then I have speaker, podcast, host, and guest empowering people to take control of their careers and their narrative. And so what I'm what I'm doing is I'm thinking really in terms of what does a person need to know about me? How am I helping them? What are my keywords that I think people will find me for? Um, but also what are my credibility builders? That's that four dummies author, you know, the speaker and the the podcast host and guest. Um, but that too is our keywords that a person might be using to find someone like me. Now it's hard to craft a headline. It it really is, and it does take time. If you visit my website, if you go to linkedin-makeover.com, I do have a LinkedIn headline generator, which guides you through crafting and creating a, a headline that is optimized for search, but also optimized for the human eye, right? We always worry about AI, but let's, let's, let's really worry about what really matters, which is the human eye and what's going to compel them. And it's free. It's under free resources. So if a person needs help crafting this, you have something to 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 use free of charge that will really create something that's eye catching and engaging. I encourage you to use that tool because what you think you know and what LinkedIn wants to know can be two widely different things. Uh, I was a I was a, named to be a speaker on a panel and they wanted fifty characters to describe me and I wrote my normal thing and it was like fifty words and I thought I was happy. They linked me to a free character generator and said I had seventy five characters because the count of the spaces and others, it was like, okay, I'd rather do the editing myself than have the conference people do the editing for me because they know exactly what they want. So better to be in sync with all of them. So that, that's a great tool. Thanks for making that available. Um, what other tips do you have for authors, professionals who've written books uh, to uh, engage with other people? You know, a lot of times, I get invitations, you know, so-and-so invited you, whatever, and some don't have any words and some have a few words. Like I saw you on LinkedIn or I heard you, which is like, who cares? Or I heard you speak on a panel or I heard you speak at this conference. Like, okay, that's a little bit more, a little better. But mm -hmm. what's the best way to get people, especially influencers, people you want to review your book or who could open doors for you to uh, get more clients or get more speaking engagements or get more marketing opportunities? You know, what's the best way to, to interact with influencers on LinkedIn through mm -hmm. the invitations? Well, you know, I think first off, what you want to do is don't just don't just invite people that you don't know and you have no relationship with. Follow them first. Follow them on LinkedIn. And if they are, in fact, an influencer, if they are someone who is active on LinkedIn, you'll start to see that they are posting. And as they post, join that conversation, comment and like. They'll start to recognize you and then connect with them. When you do it at that in that manner, you might not even need to put in a personalized note. 
personalized notes are great, of course, but maybe at that point, they're probably going to recognize you and they'll connect because you've, you've been supporting their, their posts. You're, you're interacting with them. You're showing that you're friendly and you have something to say. And of course they're going to connect with you. So, so I would say first, you know, try to forge a relationship and then hit the connect button. But here's the, here's a funny story. So when I, I'd written the, the first, uh, the first edition of LinkedIn profile optimization for dummies. And I thought to myself, like, how can I get the word out? And one of my thoughts was I need reviews. I need people writing reviews of my book. I, I know that there's people out there that have company websites, they have blogs, even, even just getting active on LinkedIn and saying, Hey, I read this book and blah, 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 blah. So I, 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 went out on LinkedIn, posted, and I said, I'm looking for people to review my book. Um, if you have a blog, if you have a website, if you're active on LinkedIn, I will send you a PDF of my my three three chapters. I will also choose the people who, who did this. I will send you a free signed copy. You know, they made it kind of juicy. Well, I started getting thousands of responses thousands of responses. It went viral. However, almost 95% of the people, Dan, thought I was asking for them to review the book, like proofread it. <laughs> you need to be specific. <laughs> but what if you have a thousand proofreaders for free? <laughs> but you would be surprised. This book had been professionally proofread, copy edited. It had been through a technical editor. And those three chapters, people would get the PDF, turn on edit mode. I had so many people suggesting <laughs> changes and ideas. It was it was crazy. So that's, that's my silly, qu silly story. Were, were they good copy edits or were they you know, going off in a different direction. In other words, do they find typos or are they saying, hey, have you thought about this? I wish. It, it really felt, it felt more nitpicky to mm. me. It was almost like they were looking to, you know, when you, when you say to a person, hey, what do you think? Or, hey, can you take a look at this? You know, tell me what you think. People are almost like in their mind, they think, oh, I have to find something to make my to make me useful here. <laughs> right, right. And so, and I, that was more of what I was getting. I mean, there were some good ideas and, you know, certainly some, 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 some things that were, were, were interesting, but it had already been professionally edited. It was a pretty tight manuscript. So, you know, it, it was just, it was weird. I, I just never would have thought that to ask for a review, people would think I was asking them to proofread it. Yeah, I guess that uh, the, the moral of that story is be real specific because people have different definitions of what you may think is really obvious. When I yeah. coach my clients through the beta reading process, I'm real specific. We say, we do not want you to copy edit this book. We want you to look for inconsistencies. Are the stories good? Is something too long? Is something too mm -hmm. short? Is something not understandable? That's, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. What can we do to make this better? We're going to have copy editors do that work later on. Yeah. But to review a book to me means you read the book and you say if you liked it or not. Yeah, exactly. She could have given more examples. She could have given this. She could have had a picture. She could have yeah. had a diagram. A screenshot would have helped. Things like that would be great as opposed to, you know, attendance has two T's. <laughs> as we wrap up, Donna, um, what other tips do you have for authors or professionals who are written books to get the most out of LinkedIn? You know, for, for authors, you can write, right? You have an idea, you've got something to say. And for most people, sometimes we, we need a little bit of help along the way. But I think what's important is to recognize whether you are a great writer or you're not, it's almost always hard to write about yourself. And, and it's normal and it's natural. We sit so close that it's hard to, to really take focus and, and have that objective, you know, does this sound right? How am I presenting myself? Does this work? Is this weird? Is this good? It, it, it's so hard. And so just because you've written a book and just because you've written, it doesn't mean that you can easily write about yourself. So, you know, sort of don't worry if that's the case, that's almost true for everybody. 
And, and if that's the situation, do recognize that by doing nothing, you're really hurting yourself because on LinkedIn, people are looking at you. They, they want to know you have this book, you clearly have something to say, and they're going to visit your profile. And this is your chance to really shape how they perceive you and, and, and open yourself up to some wonderful opportunity. I mean, LinkedIn is a great place. It's a great place for partnerships and funding and investors. It's a great place, uh, you know, for, for more book opportunities, for speaking opportunities, uh, for coaching and consulting. There's so much there. And, and if you have a, a blank profile, you're not helping yourself. And so if you do need help, know that there are people out there who, who can help create that profile for you in a manner that's very genuine and very authentic. Cool. How have you been able to turn LinkedIn connections into business? How, how have I been able to turn LinkedIn connections into business? Well, you know what? I don't really think of it as me like like turning a key and like business just flows. The way I, I look at it is, you know, I put myself out there. I, I add as much value as I can. I, I, I control my perception by making sure that I'm, I'm teaching and I'm inspiring and I'm motivating. I'm always joining the conversation. Um, and, and when I do that and I do that consistently, consistently, you know, and I give as much as I can, as I, you know, out there for free, people recognize that wait, I need help. Who do I turn to? I've built a brand. They come to me. So that's, that's how I do it. To me, it's, it's not me necessarily knocking and saying, Hey, can I have your business? It's me being there saying, Hey, I can help you when you're ready. And when they're ready, they come. Perfect. Final question. Who is your ideal client and how can they get in touch with you? You know, my, my ideal client is anyone who is looking at LinkedIn and saying, Ooh, I think there's opportunity out there, but I'm not getting it and I don't know how to get it. And, and I recognize that my brand is important, but I need help articulating it. So that could be authors, that, that could be executives or professionals. It could be business owners. Um, it could be companies who are looking at their employees and saying, you know, our employees can be a, a, a great way of, 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 you know, telling our story as well. So all of these people are people who, who can use help really articulating that story and they need someone to be that objective third party eye to, to really make that story something that's engaging and strategic for their target audience. And what is your website where people can find more information? Yeah, they can go to linkedin-makeover.com. Perfect. Thank you, Donna, for being on our show today. You've given us a lot of great information this week and last week. Uh, so check out both of those uh, uh, recordings and also a more than 200 other recordings on YouTube to help you write your book in a flash.